Hello everybody, welcome to yet another episode of Hair Talks by Terra Medical. Today, our topic is going to be about trauma. Three, two, one. So what is trauma? Trauma, simply defined, is actually an injury. Um, and we're specifically going to cover injury to the hair follicles. Broadly categorized, trauma to the hair follicles can happen slowly or really quickly. Uh, and the slow kind of trauma to the hair follicles will be kind of a repeated mechanical force on the hair follicles. And the most common form of this is traction alopecia where there is a pulling force on the hair follicles either by virtue of tying a very tight ponytail or by tying your hairs in a cornrow fashion or um, you know just always pulling on the hairs. Whereas the very sudden and acute type of trauma could come in the form of a major injury like a laceration or a cut across the scalp, surgical wounds from a craniectomy or craniotomy that may stretch across the sides of your, your scalp, burns, for example, from bleaching chemicals, oxidizing agents on your scalp, or from a high temperature object like hot oil, for example. Now these sudden acute types of injury must be sufficiently deep to interrupt the blood supply or the deep dermis in order to cause a loss of hair follicles. We diagnose traumatic hair loss by a few ways. Of course, the first and most important way is to take a thorough history of the hair loss in this individual. So if someone tells me they're a ballet dancer since they were young and they see their hairline slowly creeping backwards, we would then move on to examination of the patient to see whether there's evidence of traction alopecia across the hairline, uh, which typically involves largely the bitemporal lobes and probably in the central forelock hairline portion uh, if the hairs are tied back tautly enough for a long enough period. If the patient tells me they've been in a major car accident and this bit of hair is no longer growing or if they've had a composite facelift or tread lift and this bit of hair is not growing then we'll go into the examination expecting a, a different result where we'll see completely empty areas of scar tissue. Now in both those examples, the hair follicle architecture or the blood supply and the skin quality has been severely compromised. The hair follicles are not expected to grow back even with medical therapy uh, unless the degree of thinning is really mild. So the general principle to treating these conditions would be to apply a hair transplant to the areas of baldness. In traction alopecia, the transplant's aim is to reframe the face, to restore the hairline back to its original position or a position that the patient prefers. This can be done via uh, strip surgery or linear excision surgery, also known as FUT, or can be done via a FUE procedure where we will have to shave to excise the hair follicles uh, right at the level of the scalp. The hairline is designed according to a discussion between the, the hair restoration surgeon and the patient uh, and then the, the transplanted hairs will behave like hairs from the donor area and grow permanently. Of course, to prevent further traction alopecia, we would advise our patient to no longer tie that tight ponytail or go with that cornrow hair styling that they used to do before. The results of a hair transplant are meant to be permanent, provided there's no further androgenetic alopecia that might occur in later ages or other causes of hair loss that might occur with the passage of time. So the treatment for traction alopecia is meant to be a restoration of the frame of the face with a permanent outcome. Now let's talk about treating hair loss within a scar. Now these hair loss that occurs in scars can occur through various places of the face and head that contains hair follicles. A surgical scar on the scalp or a burn on the beard or a knock on the eyebrow can all result in hairless patches. And the restorative treatment again is to transplant hair follicles into those areas. Now depending on the characteristic of the scar, if it was a keloidal scar, for example, a scar that bulges out, or if it was a flat surgical scar, or a scar that looks really taut and stretched, may all have different blood flow characteristics. And that may compromise 
the outcome of the surgery. We usually do not tell our patients that we expect 100% growth of the hair follicles within the scar. We tell them that at least 75% of the grafts that are implanted will grow well, but that's also based on various factors that we see on the scar and within the scar and the location of the scar, for example. Implantation strategies into a scar may differ from person and location. So for example, if the scar was in a pretty well hidden spot uh, and we're worried about future androgenetic hair loss, we may not increase the density of that area by that much. We just want to provide sufficient coverage over a not so aesthetically crucial region of the scalp. Whereas, if the scar was across the eyebrow, we would want to use single hair follicle grafts quite like an eyebrow transplant and match that density of the eyebrow, also giving a proper aesthetic shape to the eyebrow. We also use hair follicles to cover up, for example, bad acne scarring on the face if they so desire facial hair to grow from that area. These effects are also meant to be permanent once we see the hair follicles grow. Like traction alopecia, unless we are expecting androgenetic alopecia in the donor, scar hair transplants are meant to be a permanent result. On the flip side, trauma can also induce hair growth. We see that in treatments like microneedling of the scalp or when someone scrapes their knee and, and little bits of hair starts to sprout from the knee. That probably has to do with revascularization and the release of growth factors from these treatments or these accidents. So trauma can also cause the loss of hair follicles but can actually induce growth in certain situations, which is the interesting bit. So in summary, a trauma is a kind of injury to your skin and Funnily enough, while we can induce certain areas of hair to grow, albeit sometimes unexpectedly, it usually causes hair follicles to be damaged or lost. And the treatment for such usually requires a transplant surgery to fix. Now, if you've had various traumatic injuries to hair-bearing skin and you've seen hair loss, tell us about your experiences and don't forget to click like and subscribe to hear more about how we go about fixing trauma, scars and hair loss. We'll see you next time. Bye.